today we have Slavin Vincetic. Vincetic. That's good. Okay, Slavin Vincetic. Uh, he's going to tell us how to personalize project management. So please give him your full attention. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome to PMZG. So the first thing or the first rule of every presentation or talk is for a speaker to tell something about himself. And uh, I really like to jump that and just go straight to some storytelling. So I will tell you a few stories. First of them is uh, how I cooked my dinner with my girlfriend. So we were thinking about what shall we cook. And I said, you know what, I have an idea. You just need to go to the grocery store and buy 400 grams of uh, chicken breasts and a salad. And that's it. I had a vision. I thought, what can possibly go wrong? She got two things to buy. And uh, this is something that I had in mind. And I was waiting for her to come back and start cooking. She did come back. But she didn't bring, well, she did bring chicken, she did bring salad, but not regular salad, a Mexican salad, and tortillas, and lots of stuff. And I said, well, but I just told you to bring chicken and uh, salad. And she said, yeah, but you know what? I was buying, and I had this vision of enchiladas. And I go and bought some uh, tortillas and Mexican uh, salad, and we created, well, we made this. Okay. Um, what was the problem here? Well, this was my expectations. I was expecting this because I thought my instructions were very clear. Buy two things, not four. We are going to uh, be making uh, chicken salad, not enchiladas. We can agree that these things are similar. But still, it's not the same thing. So that was a bit abstract uh, example. Let's go a little deeper. So maybe for a start, can uh, raise hands the project management. OK, good. I suppose others are maybe developers, designers, front-end developers. OK, we have everything. And, uh, Team leads, maybe? OK, cool. So maybe you can relate to this uh, example. When you try to explain something to someone and uh, transfer some information with certain expectations, and then what you get back was totally different from what you thought you were transferring. So one more. I was going to our designers team and tell them, well, a certain designer, and told him, listen, we need to make a very simple uh, newsletter pop-up. Very simple. Like 150 pixels uh, wide, 70 pixels high, just needs to have some small copy and an input field. That's it. And the designer said, you got it, dude. So yeah, my information went very easily. And I was like, I'm doing good. You know, I could do this all day. I can just go from designers to developers to just assign tasks and everything will be as I imagined it. But what was the outcome? Not simple at all. Totally different. Or the top, everything. And I was thinking, how is this possible? It was very simple. Create simple newsletter pop-up. And I was asked the, the, the designer what I did wrong. He said, nothing. You gave me all the information I needed. I just go into my zone. And I think this is the best solution because our main mission of the website is uh, e-commerce. And I thought we could transfer some more messages to our users because this and that and this and that. And what I did get back is a lot of feedback. So. On the left side was my expectations, on the right side was the outcome. 
So I would like to, for all of you, to think about similar situations that you have. When you had something in mind, you go to a person to transfer an information or request anything, and then the outcome was totally different from what you were expecting. I'm sure you had a lot of examples like that. I'll give you a second, just maybe remember them. So as I thought, okay, I did something wrong. I got feedback on my um, approach, how I approached him. Maybe next time I'll try something else and it will work. Let's jump to a different story now. Like maybe a year ago, year and a half, uh, me and a couple of our, my colleagues from the Gordian went to a, let's say, leadership education, leadership academy, something like that. And uh, there we learned how to approach people, how to maybe categorize them, how to, how to see what kind of person they could be. Maybe. It's, it's very abstract and I have approached it very critically and thought about it. But the thing that uh, did get my attention was the, there is something called uh, Gallup. Gallup is uh, an agency that is based uh, on uh, surveys. And they are doing surveys for a very long period of years and they have very good database of, of people, of their behaviors, of their uh, character traits, traits, and very, very all sorts of things. And they did develop something called Gallup uh, Strengths Finder. And basically that's, you get a survey, you fill the survey, and you get a five strengths, your, your strengths. And that five strengths can be in one of these categories. So here is strategic thinking, relationship building, influencing, or executing. And that started to open my eyes a bit because we were talking about, okay, if, you ha if we have a person that have like four out of five talents in executing, that's his way of doing things. So if you want to pass any kind of information to that person, you need to be aware that that person is in mind executor. And for someone to execute something, it needs to have a very specific things or very straightforward task so it knows I'm, I'm doing this and I'm finished, I'm finished, I executed. But still, this was a bit too much, you know, I'm, if I want to approach someone I need to send a survey of like 100 questions and wait, wait for 30 to 40 minutes for the answers to come back, to interpret it, everything, just for the practical way it was not very useful. But, what did happen, so what? <laughs> okay. I did start asking myself about the communication in general. So if, like I said, Gallup did open my eyes just for a, a fact that some person are, are more prone to some way of doing it. So next time, if I can just maybe guess, okay, Steve may be an executor, next time I approach to him, I will know, I need to specify things for Steve. I need to create a very detailed task if I want things to be done. And that's put me in a mode of thinking and rethinking about the way I'm communicating to my colleagues. And then, I go a little deeper. How do I communicate? I found out that I'm kind of more a thinking person. Out of these five strengths, I have four in strategic thinking. And some of my colleagues can affirm that because I'm very good at philosophy and thinking. And yeah, some of them are laughing right now. <laughs> but that's something that I'm very comfortable with. And. Uh, when I try to transfer information to someone else, I'm doing it from my perspective, an abstract, a thinking, like just in, in past, I would approach Steve and said, Steve, please create me a newsletter pop-up. 
I trust you, you know what you need to uh, do to make it happen and go away. Because that's the way I work. But later I found out that that's the not the way the Steve is working. So that got me thinking how I'm interacting with the world in, in general. And it was all from that thinking perspective. I was always abstract, I was always very wide. When I talk to someone, it's very hard for some, for some ex executor to, to get correct information from me because I, I didn't have the need for it. I was just being all creative and whenever I was missing some information, I filled it in with some of my creativity, I could say. The biggest point that I took from that research was that everyone is different. So everyone has its own way of interacting with the world, thinking about approaching others. And that was a very big step for me to try to simplify the Gallup process and to create something more practical so all of us can benefit from it. And uh, the code name was Popo, it's in Croatian, so it's Pristup Osobi Prema Osobnosti, or I try to translate it to English, ABOC, um, Approach Based on Character. It's not really a character, but I didn't find any better word for it. So, what is Popo? So we divide all of our production into two categories of people. We have executors and we have creatives. So what that means? That means that whenever we need to interact with someone from the production, so anyone from project management department needs to go to a designer and ask, ask for a design or something, it will try to think, is that a person executor? Or is that a person a creative? If that person is a creative person, this is the information we need to give them. We need to give them a bigger picture, not details. Give them a higher cause so they can contemplate on it. They can think about it and their creativity can kick in. Like I said, they really don't need a lot of information. If you spam them with a lot, a lot of information, they will be in a frame, they will be boxed in, they won't be comfortable. They need to have their hands free for being the, the most productive that they can be. Uh, they really like to think outside the box. That means also, if you specify them very strictly, what the outcome should be. Probably, and probably, you will get something else. Because they are very hard to fit into a box and they are always trying to innovate or bring something a bit flavor. If you specify that very, very strictly, most of the time you will get something that's jumping out of that specification. And that is something to be aware of. And quality varies. Because Creativity is a strange process. It's not something simple. And when creative person have their are in the zone, they could produce very high quality material. But when they are not, then maybe you can be in a bit of a problem. But also, just the fact that you're aware of that helps you very much. On the other side, we have executor. An executor need specific info. You need to be very broad, you need to be very detailed, you need to try to cover as much of the, as much of the edge cases as you, as you can. Because if you don't, if you came to an executor and said, I need a newsletter pop-up, and you start walking away, he or she will pull you for your sleeve and said, sorry, sorry, can you give me more info? What, what, is the, what is the vision and mission of the, of the project? Uh, what is the color scheme? What is the brand guidelines? 
uh, can you have this, can you have that, when it needs to be done, uh, lots and lots of questions. So if you uh, successfully evade him or she for asking that question, that person will be in trouble and probably won't deliver because it's in a, it's just don't have enough information and his, his or she's mind is working on a very detailed scale. So if she or he don't, doesn't have enough details, probably won't uh, produce the way you think about it. Need to know the exact outcome. So if you just throw away all the information that you have, still may be not enough because that person needs to know exactly what the outcome should be of, of that process. And also, just the fact that you're all aware of that can help you cope with that. <coughs> and the very specific thing that, that executioners are very, very uh, good at what you are specifying them. So if you specify something to them, very, very likely you will get exactly that. If you are thinking, well, that design is very creative, maybe he will come up with something else or add something more, probably won't. If you said five bullets, you will get five bullets. If you said uh, one screen with, a, with three people uh, on a photo, you will get exactly three people on the photo. You won't get four. Now that we know all of that, how can we implement it in our work? Well, the first thing is to, like I said, most of the times, be aware. Be aware that your colleague won't take information as you said it, maybe. Or it just can't read your mind because it's working from a different mindset, I would say. So that is the, the biggest and the first thing. So next time, when you go reach out to your colleague on anything, try to think about it, is he or she a creative or an executioner? And then uh, build your strategy how to approach them. This is a, a strange, but, but I love the quote. The meaning of communication is the elicited response. So I did mention it uh, a bit earlier. If you are talking to your colleague, and uh, or maybe your, I don't know, your boyfriend or your girlfriend, maybe we can more relate to that. Uh, you talk to, your, talk to your girlfriend and you are really tr trying to explain something on, or maybe explain that what you did wasn't so wrong, but she thought it was. And that information just don't pass in by, just, just don't get, get. She, she's not getting it at all. That talks a lot about your way of communication. So my way, not about her way. So if I'm approaching Steve and I want a newsletter uh, pop-up and I did get something totally different what I was expecting, it's not Steve's fault. I was supposed to think about how to ask that information. And the biggest thing is experiment. So nothing is totally defined. I, just, I can't give you like a list of things, this is how you're supposed to approach and this is how you're supposed not to approach. Everyone is different. But try to have that two categories, the creative and the executioner, and think about it and try, try different things. Okay, approach and purposely try a creative way of approaching to executioner person and see how it reacts and try to learn from that. And what have we learned? As we, I said, my team and me who implemented all this and tried to test it out. I would say a lot, but we can talk about it on the, on the panel. I will share something with you and it is, this is the most honest thing that I can share. It's our Excel sheet where we are trying to <coughs> document the approaches to people, how they react, and maybe some, uh, some things, how we can uh, approach in the, f in the future. Yes, this is on creation, but I say I just copy it and paste it to be the most honest that I can show you. And maybe we can just took out, I did blur something because 
I still don't want for people to recognize themselves in these results. <laughs> so let's check this one. It says the situation, I was giving him a creative tasks. And the response was, he didn't do much. He's a good deliverer when you specify things for him. So what is the approach that, is, uh, that could work? Direct approach, define tasks, and also he likes, likes to know why something is done. So this is one uh, row in our Excel sheets. This is the, the name of the person. So the next time someone from my team tries to or needs something from this person, he can look in the, in, the, in the sheet and try to think about how I will approach that person. Steve would say maybe that is a manipulation. I would agree <laughs> different. And uh, I'm sure you read through all of this now, so I don't need to go one by one. And from the end, for the end, what I want you guys to take from this presentation or this talk well, one thing will be a great success for me, and that is just to build awareness about it. Just think, think about the way you are communicating with your girlfriend, boyfriend, with your colleague, with your boss. Try to think about it. I'm not saying this is the, the best way to divide them into two categories, but it's a start. And just to be aware that the way you are perceiving the world, it's not the way that everyone else is communicating and perceiving the world. So, yeah, for the end, my name is Slavin, and uh, that's all for me. Hi, I'm Steve. Hi, I'm Slavin. That's Slavin. <laughs> Who are you? What's your name? Uh, I'm Jelko. Jelko. And you're from which company? Five. Five. Hi, uh, I'm Anita. I'm from Limax. <laughs> I'm Anita. I come from Limax. Yeah, my name is Luca and I come from Async Labs. Cool. So, first, any questions right off the bat from the audience? No? Okay. As usual. <laughs> oh, we have one. oh, that's good. Oh, As a reminder, I have stickers for the people that ask questions. <laughs> so, uh, I have one quick question before we get to these two. Uh, the, the those those people in your spreadsheet, those are clients or are they no, no, their colleagues? Colleagues. Okay. Yeah. That was my question. Designers, backend developers, frontend developers. Okay. Have you considered using it? For, for the clients? Yeah. Uh, no, we are still experimenting with it. We didn't. We don't have framework finished, okay. I would say, but I would like to define some things in the future and maybe put it out like some kind of framework for, okay. for people. Question. Okay, so do you think that uh, uh, people change categories, uh, I don't know, yes. uh, during time or as yes. fun knowledge of topics? Yeah, they, they do change. They do change. Oh. Is it oh. <laughs> uh, Yes, they are ch changing the, the categories. And uh, when you're documenting things, you can you can uh, testify it, and that's very interesting because we had a few examples when we taught that uh, one person is very very uh, creative person, and then later on, as it I don't know maybe adjust to work or adjust to environment, starting being more uh, executioner person. Ex executing. Executing. Executioner kills you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had yeah, they do kill you sometimes. <laughs> Okay, we had one question in the back. I can be loud. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite loud. Uh, is your name in that Excel sheet too? No. <laughs> That's a great question. <coughs> yeah. Well, we don't have a, a project management team inside. Big inside, yeah. Because, like I said, we are still experimenting with it. And when we, when we build our framework on, on this base, then I guess I love the idea from Steve. Didn't think about it at all for the, using it for the client. So definitely will be. I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> well, no, it is. Okay, so uh, other panelists, do you? Yeah, Tony. We'll get to you, Tony. We'll get to you. Uh, do you do any profiling, profiling of clients or colleagues or I don't know. 
people you work with? Is that something you think about? Is there testing involved, maybe at the beginning of the, the employment period, perhaps? Uh, yeah, I can jump in. Um, I never done it specifically as Slavin. For a little bit of background, I worked in The Guardian for almost two and a half years. And I worked with a lot of people here. And I never done it in the same way as Slavin does it now, very popo structure. But I had, uh, I had a way of uh, locating people based on those traits. And for example, I knew when to talk to some front-end guys. It was better to talk to them in the morning because they came very early. And they were, you know, uh, <laughs> but, but late in the day they were pretty grumpy, you know. And uh, so I tried to locate some of them traits based on work behavior when it's good to communicate to them. So I, I think it definitely has, a, has an impact because I saw results that are better if you communicate them to them in the morning. When, when some were more operative in the evening or in the afternoon. So that's from my experience, but currently in my company we're a small team. I don't uh, do that pretty much because you don't have so many people to uh, to work with. You, I don't know if it's more, if it's a more uh, better approach in bigger companies than, than smaller ones. You have what five? Five of us. Yeah. yeah. So you, you know everyone. You know everyone, and it's like you have this specific communication with them. You don't. You don't really switch or have to, you know, go in a spreadsheet and remember, oh, this person is like that. It's, it's a little bit more different. But I see the point in, in, in bigger organizations. Anita? Um, okay, so I, I work in the human resources, so I professionally psychoanalyze people, also in my <laughs> spare time, too. So I always think about people, um, but I don't necessarily use specific categories to put them in because. There are just so many of them, I don't know which ones to use. So just the first one that pops to my mind, when I meet a person and I see that they're very, I don't know, um, you know one of those people who say, oh, we'll see. You know, th there are people who are just not very structured. So for example, when I notice something like that, I make a mental check, but I don't necessar necessarily come with a schema to, to say, okay, I'm gonna see which category they fit. It's just that if something pops out about them, if there's something really noticeable about them, I will see, oh, this is that kind of person. But what I really love about my job is that you never get to the point where you know all the kinds of people. There are always more people that I meet that are like, I don't know where to put this person, in what category does this person belong? So I, I love that you cannot categorize people even though I would really like to. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I totally agree on that, and I think that is a, a level up. And uh, for me, the, the biggest point was just to give some simple uh, framework for people so they can start think about uh, the communication and approach to it. I guess you are from, I, yeah, I guess from the human resource, yeah. it's very intuitive yeah. for you, but for everyone else, maybe it isn't. We're just like more... Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, I see. We are more... Um, as they come, everything. Yeah. I, so, I agree yeah. because um, I'm just so professionally deformed that I always think, you think about <laughs> people in these categories. But I did notice that people who are not of psychological profession, they it helps them a lot to tell them, look, you should, like you said, you should pay attention to these categories and see if a, a team member belongs to one of them. I think that helps leaders a lot. And I think you always have to be aware these are not strict categories. You cannot just box a person, but this is just a schema that helps you think about people. Just like, I don't know, skin color. There's so much more to us than skin color, but you have to categorize people in some way to, to make it easier to I don't know, deal with them. I think one thing I really like about this is it's very simple to say someone that likes a lot of structure or someone that doesn't like a lot of structure. And for me, that's how I can kind of think about it. So. Yeah. Ajoko, what do they what do they do at five? Do you psychoanalyze yeah. everyone? <laughs> uh, no, as far as I know. Uh, so, but uh, I'm not the project manager actually. So, um, but you um, do work with people. Yeah, I do work with people, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, <laughs> okay. Joko's maybe a bit introverted. Yeah. So, um, I I, would, I mean I like this in some way. So I agree that. Uh, there are a lot, a lot more categories, categories of people. So you, you can just, 
easily say, okay, there are just only two. But uh, for, for project managers, it makes sense to actually communicate with other project managers how someone behaves. I, I think that uh, every, everyone probably subconsciously uh, knows, okay, I have to specify tasks more, deta more detailed for someone, or um, this is a creative person, I can just say, okay, do something, and it, the results will be usually good. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this, uh, maybe this, uh, like a, I would say it's a start of a good framework to actually communicate those findings between the project managers in the entire company, and that would probably be useful for us as well. But we, we don't have something um, as official as this. I, I think that people are actually doing it, uh, maybe talking, uh, project managers between themselves um, about, uh, so you have to specify task for this one, you don't have to for this one, but we don't have, uh, have it on the record. Nothing so formal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do your uh, colleagues know that you do this? Is this like, are they going to like watch this video? And, <laughs> and there, there's a couple of people that work for Gregorian here. So yeah. Now they know, right? In, this is in a big Monday, we have, um, I think, how I say, Jolly from Monday. Uh, <coughs> Jolly, I don't know how to say Jolly. it. Happy Monday. I don't know. Happy, happy Monday. It's major. Uh, where I will talk about it. Till, till recently, I didn't want for anyone else to know about it because they. I don't know how they would feel about it. <laughs> yeah, but as I said, lately I was thinking and I think it's very important for everyone else to, to share that findings. And I did start to talk about it and few of them uh, were really interested, said, oh, I'm very interested, what you, what you got on me? How is your approach on me? What, what did you write? Oh, I'm very, very curious about it. So I think, like I said, uh, what I'm doing now I'm planning planning to do is to bring more awareness to it, and it's okay. So designers and front end developers and back end developers also can have some spreadsheets for project managers also. Yeah, how to approach a project manager? Uh, Tony, and we'll come back over here. Well, You're loud. I'm so loud. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so basically, <laughs> my question is if strategic thinking is mapped to like creativity, and if executor is mapped to uh, someone that does to-do lists, what would be like the, the next, the third category of people that would be like relationship people and influence people? Do you have someone that doesn't fit into any categories? Maybe there's a third approach <coughs> of someone. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have no idea. I don't work here. That's, that's, a, a friend. <laughs> that's a very good question. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe we just we now have like something of a confirmation bias, so we divided everyone into two categories and just trying to, if maybe they are not in some of them, trying to squeeze them in a bit. I'm not sure honestly. I'm just trying to make everything as uh, as simple as possible, and after that we can maybe uh, divide it into. But as Anita said, that there's so many. Uh, categories of people and if you're trying to define all of them you're going into very deep rabbit hole so that won't happen so I guess my answer is no okay but that would be for like these two are basically made for tasks so you're gonna do that's, that's what you do at work though yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you have like also who can you ask for this task maybe you can suggest a relationship person or uh, who can you make do something? You can ask an influence person, something like. Yeah, sure. That will be that will be like level up and get uh, very very much. Yeah. You, when did you start this experiment? Just a couple months ago. Or? Um. Year. year. About a year. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Question. So, question for you. Okay. Uh, uh, did you do uh, some self analysis, and how did you approach to this? Well, I, uh, I did uh, fulfill the Gallup strengths, uh, strengths Finder, uh, and there I find out that I have like four out of five uh, talents in strategic thinking. Also, there we, uh, does anybody know uh, what the DISC is? It's, it's also like a character um, analysis. You have four colors, red, yellow, blue, and, uh, and green. And Based on that, you can um, map some traits to people or so approaches. <clears throat> so yeah, I did a not 
others did analysis on me and I just got a, got the results. So if you want to know more detail, we can talk uh, after the <laughs> panel. <clears throat> um, so there's like a million different personality tests. So uh, you've, you've shown us, I guess, one, Gallup, and then this other yeah. disc one. Um, if I wanted to start this at my company, what should I use yours? Is maybe there are some weaknesses of yours? Uh, Would you recommend I it? I could, uh, well, I want to hear your opinion, and me, maybe she'll say that she agrees. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm, I will answer almost the same as do, I. Do you think it's good? This. Yeah, I do because I won't be doing it. But okay. I don't think so. But maybe you want to change something. Maybe in the future, okay. like I said, we are experimenting. Maybe for. Uh, next year, I can maybe show some totally different results and say all of this doesn't work at all, forget everything. But till now, we did get a good results out of it. And it just works because it's so simple. You don't need to know, I don't know, okay, you are the green one, you love this and peace and quiet, and I need to approach you in a very, I don't know, mild tone and say, how are you? Is your day working? I don't know. We have just two categories and we can, it's very easy for everyone, everyone else to just jump in and to explain it. And that is one of the biggest things also. If we hire a new project manager, I can just have a meet like half an hour, explain everything, show the Excel sheet, and he or she will know <coughs> where it needs to be. Okay. Comments, would you see any weaknesses? You guys can jump in. Do you think you would use I, something like this? Yeah, I, I think it's a great starting point. So um, you you always have to improvise, but uh, you know you just say, okay, this one is mostly creative. No one is perfect in no one will fit perfectly in any category, but it's it's just just a good starting point for a project manager or a new project manager maybe even more uh, to actually know how to approach someone that uh, he's just starting to work with. Well, um, there are flaws in every test. Um, you cannot find a test that is 100% accurate. Um, actually, you would be surprised how, uh, how low the, um, the correlation is between, I don't know, if you do one test after a period of time, you will get almost certainly different results. If you ever try to retake psychological tests, you will get different results because for one, people change. Second of all, there's always this error of measurement. So I don't think we should even strive to get 100% accurate picture of who we are because we are not 100%, you know, fixed in a box. We, we I feel like we vibrate like electrons. You know, we don't have a fixed state of mind. So I think that if you find a good model that meets your needs, that gives you enough information, just enough information. You don't have to get into really deep psychological analysis of people. You can just find a good model that fits the needs of your team. And if that works for you, that's a great model. Every one of them is going to be flawed. If you're looking for a really high quality model, you should look into those that are, I don't know, highly rated, recommended, often used, scientifically tested, because a bunch of them, I just talked to a, uh, where is, where is that? Oh. I forgot your name, sorry. <laughs> we were just talking about this Myers-Briggs test. I'm sure you've probably heard of it, those four types. Um, that's not scientifically proven. It's just a fun way to test yourself. But if you want to get to a higher level, then you can look into those that are you know, approved by psychologists, and you will certainly get a higher quality of a test. Um, yes, everything. That's <laughs> easy. <laughs> However, um, I, I do disagree with one thing from your presentation, where you said that uh, if you approach a person that you miss category, category, uh, then uh, if you don't uh, receive the result that you provide, uh, the, the input that you provide, and you don't receive the output, it's probably. Uh, your fault. It's probably the way you communicated. I don't. I don't necessarily agree on this uh, completely. Why? Because uh, it's the same as your example, as you said. So you had like a creative thinker, and you. And most of the time you work, you don't have the opportunity to choose with with will you work on a specific task with a creative one or a, a ex, ex, executing one. So if you give a creative person, a creative designer, a task, I need a pop-up that is 150 pixels uh, 
wide and 70 pixels high, this, this. I think this should be sh pretty clear. And if you don't receive the re result, I'm not sure if, if that's the fault of a project manager. Because you did specify a pretty much uh, executable test. Yeah, I think sorry. probably. I'm just going to Yeah, sorry. <laughs> just, <laughs> Go uh, for it. The, uh, the implementation was actually correct because the dimensions were correct. <laughs> and uh, you didn't say, I, I just want a simple box and then an input box and something. You said, I want a pop up of those dimensions, and they were. Yeah, so I think this has to do with the structure versus unstructure. And I think as project managers, oftentimes we expect uh, individual contributors to ask questions when there's vagueness in a specification or a requirement. And creative people see that as an opportunity to be creative. And other people maybe aren't as confident or they want more structure. So they will ask those questions. They feel confident that they should have more information, so they'll ask questions. So I think it's kind of two sides to the, the same thing. And yeah. the best thing is always ask as many questions as possible, in, in my opinion. Uh, the point of that quote is to set your expectations and just to be, uh, just to be aware that if you did get something different, maybe your approach should be different. It's not black and white, like I said, but just like a good uh, incentive to think about it. Can I do something differently next time and get maybe different results? Also, as you said, you there are a lot of situations where you can just decide, okay, this is the very creative task. I need the, the most creative person in, in the company. Sometimes you're limited and you need to do whatever it takes to done it right. So sometimes when you have a person that needs everything defined, but you need to give them a creative work, you know what to expect. You know, maybe he will struggle with something because I gave him something very abstract, don't have enough information right now, and I really don't have. I, I don't know how to specify it even more. But you know that that person could be struggling and you can just be aware of it and maybe a work with that person, how to get more info, how to maybe make it uh, easy for that person, whatever. The, the biggest point to is to just, well, the biggest point is to be aware that uh, your communication is uh, feeding back to you. So yeah, you started it. it. Yeah. So you have to do it right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this, there's also a bit of a cultural thing here. I don't know if any of you, and I'm going to generalize here. Uh, in general, if you work with developers from like India or China, your specifications have to be extremely strict because they will look at the thing and they will do exactly what it says. And if there's any opportunity for question, there will not be any action. They will just stop working and then sometimes tell you that there's questions, but sometimes not. And uh, that, that's been my experience, at least. Um, I don't know if, if you've worked with outsourcers uh, from other countries, anyone, but yeah, so I don't know. In the US, like generally, my experience is people ask a bunch of questions, even if there is an opportunity to be creative, there's still many questions asked. I think as you move east, the, the amount of uh, questions decreases. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it actually depends on the person, of course. <laughs> but uh, more creative people, I mean, maybe, uh, yeah. Let's say higher quality people will usually ask more questions, and the people that just like to uh, get the work done will just uh, say, okay, I want to. Uh, have have like the simplest possible solution and just be done with it and they won't ask anything they will just assume the simplest uh, possible uh, task so i should fire people that don't ask questions not necessarily <laughs> i mean you should encourage them to ask questions first and then see yeah. <laughs> good point good point yeah. any comments no head shaking pretty much cool any more questions yeah okay so you said uh, you are satisfied uh, uh, for now <coughs> how are you measuring? Uh, how do you know you are doing better now than before? Good question. Uh, well, like I said, we are putting everything in the Excel sheet. 
So to be honest, we don't have zero and ones. We tried uh, this like four times, and then uh, we tried this three times, and we su were su successful that many times. But we have something like daily meetups, but project management, like daily PM, we call it. And every day we talked about it. We are talking about our approaches, how we approach someone, and how that person reacted reacted back. So, like I said, to be really honest, we don't have a measurement for it, but everyone in the team thinks it's uh, very good. It's it's working for us, and uh, that was the best thing. Well, with the main benefit is that you're talking about. For you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, you have, do you have people who are good in both? <laughs> no, Probably. no. Why? I, I would say because like uh, now I'm in a bit of a confirmation bias and I would say to you that they are switching roles. So sometimes they are more in a creative role and sometimes they are more on the executing role. But, uh, but the people, uh, the very good people, are the people who are... Yes, uh, yeah, I agree. Both, you know, yeah. you, you give them something like uh, specify and, and uh, he or she gave you specified specified things and you know you, we can do that like that that or that you know sure yeah I, I can tell you we do have two persons in the entire production that are like that but for the simplicity I would just like to Ignore those two and say we have two. Yeah, because now we are going into but, uh, the super people. <laughs> yeah, they are, but uh, it's every... convenient because they don't cause problems. You can communicate them. Yeah, can, you can true. communicate with them yeah. any way Anyways. possible, yeah. and they're good enough. And uh, figure it out, right? everyone, for themselves, thinks that they are good at both. So yeah, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Okay. If they know how do you categorize them, the idea is that you can motivate them to do things better, in some way manipulate with them. I think it's not a good idea to share the, all your infos with them, and I think that people don't want to be labeled in some kind of way. To clarify, you mean the colleagues not on the PM team? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I thought so too, till recently. Like I said, then I try to throw in a bit of informations here and there and uh, check the, the reactions and like I said the reactions were really great and as I was thinking more and more about it I think that the biggest benefit is for everyone to be aware of it so if they are aware how they are uh, approaching to others and how they like to be approached that builds awareness and the culture in the company also so maybe in six months we don't need uh, Excel sheets anymore because we will all be aware of it. And sometimes a designer will say, listen man, you know me, I need to have everything in detail, can you please give me some more info? And then it's much more easy than, I don't understand this, I just can't work like this, you need to give me some more info, it's just, it's a different approach. And I personally think it's a good step, is it or is it not? Um, I will see in a few days. How can uh, how how are, how are you uh, motivating design people? Well, this is not to talk about motivation. It's just about uh, approach. So I can tell you we can have a different talk about motivation. It's very complex thing I would say, at least for me. But um, I don't know how to answer that. Not, not right now. I'm just more uh, based on the how to approach someone to get the information that you're trying to that you're trying to send to them. So sometimes that will affect motivation also, but that's not the way you're. Mo you can use it. You can use it maybe to motivate it. And also we have some uh, notes here in our tables that are uh, touching a bit on our motivation, but just that's not the. Not, not the primary, not the secondary cause of this uh, framework. One final question. Uh, so what is the main purpose of it? 
main goal if you do not if you don't know how to measure it? How will you how will you know if you achieve your goal? So if you don't know how to measure it, how do you know if you've achieved your goal? Yeah, I think what is that goal? What is that goal? That that goal is to just have a better communication and how would you know it? I think everyone here knows that if you have a good communication with some someone or you don't have it. And I think it, it can be expressed by the frustration of the person, of the department, of the number of uh, complaints to, to, to their uh, leaders, to, to me, to their colleagues, to just also maybe with their uh, motivation. So yeah, I definitely agree. I'm more of let's measure it type of person, but sometimes it's very hard to measure, especially when you're talking about soft skills and, and people. So on, on, on that front, I would say you just feel it. Final thoughts, you're gonna keep using this? Definitely, and I will try to, yeah, okay. I will try to create maybe a framework to be a bit more documented, to be more easy, more measurable. No, I, yeah. I just want to protest about yeah. measurements right now. Uh, w w will you try something like this, do you think? I will recommend it to our project managers. Cool. As a first step, <laughs> uh, you work in HR, would you, I don't know, do you have like uh, some sort of structure like this at your company already? Would you implement something like this? Um, well, we do our uh, selection process very thoroughly and we have a lot of questions that we ask people. And so I'm- um, You have the whole just, profile. I think I have to even yeah. lower the number of categories that I use for, um, for, um, you know, categorizing people. So I don't know if I should add even more to the <laughs> reports that I'm writing, but um, I'm the kind of a person that reacts when, in the moment. If I see there's a problem and if I see there's a misunderstanding because this person is talking in this, I don't know, very structured language and the other one is talking in a very un a scattered language, I will point it out. I don't really come with a, with a schema in advance. I just feel like my role is to react when there is a conflict, point out, okay, so these are your differences, you're speaking different languages, but you're actually trying to say the same thing. So I feel like that is my role, and not to come forward with preconceived schemas. Well, as I said in the beginning, as we are a small team in the company, it's more on a, my subconscious level how I communicate with different team members or my co-founders or anybody. But I believe some structure has sense in as as the team grows, especially for for a company of, of this size, where there's a lot of people coming in and, and going, and uh, yeah, it's a good me method. For, for, for. <laughs> uh, thank you for coming to PM Zagreb. Uh, round of applause for our panelists. <laughs>